Yo, what's up, Swag? And you already know what time it is, man. It's your boy, Keon Lord, aka KL Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man. Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, you telling me this dude is one of the best outside linebackers slash defensive ends. Oh, bro, one of the best, bro. He still is real good, bro. I, a lot of people will say that he watched up, but he's still like that. He is still like that, man. We are back here again with microphone, man. Look, the Chargers got a lot of defensive players, man, on that team, bro. I'm not going to lie, man. They trying to build up their team, too, man. Oh, look, man, we're back here with microphone, bro. Let's get into it. Glory save, save for your boy. boy. After, After multiple double upload days, days which I will happily bring you guys with a huge smile on my face. Look at that bread, boy. It's going to be a little bit slow. Following the Deshaun Watson update I gave you guys earlier today and before the Jerry Jones. Yeah, I'm going to react to that, you guys, if you guys want me to do it. Today, I was thinking that, okay, until Friday where we find out what's going on with Deshaun Watson, there's probably not going to be any other news today. After all, Russell Wilson's been traded. Crazy. Carson Wentz has been traded. We're not going to have our third straight day in a row. Where a player gets traded, True. Right? Well, for sure not a superstar player, right? Wrong! Because we got some breaking news. The AFC West is going bananas. This is the third game in a row where a Pro Bowler has been traded. So before we get to the content, do me a favor. Okay, I see you with the energy, Mike. Support my grind. If you subscribe and turn on our notifications, and man, got the, got the energy. Or you subscriber, you'll enter for a chance to win five hundred dollars. We also do short okay. versions of this news on my TikTok page. And now that we got all that out of the way, break. Okay, hey, hey, that boy Mike got the energy over. Okay. Damn, he fell. Let me make sure the volume up for you guys, bro. Alright, so it's good. Bro, I can't believe Khalil Matt, bro. Got traded. One, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? I want to take this brief moment to shout out each and every one of my followers on Instagram and Twitter for tagging me in this news. I was Damn. literally in a nail salon getting my nails done, and I was being yelled at by my nail lady as a result of how much my phone was going off and how Damn. I couldn't help but check the notifications. Four years ago, the Las Vegas Raiders completely sent shockwaves throughout the NFL when yeah. they decided to trade Khalil Mack to the Chicago Bears. Khalil Mack would get traded alongside a second round pick, which was called Komet, for the Ooh. 24th overall. Overall pick in the 2019 NFL draft, Josh, which would be Damn. Josh Jacobs, and a 2019 pick, which would become Damon Arnett, as well as a 2019 sixth round pick and a 2020 third round pick, which would become Brian Edwards. Damn. After that, Khalil Mack would sign a six year extension with the Chicago Bears, worth $141 million and $90 million guaranteed. Oh my gosh. The highest paid defensive player in NFL history at the time. As a result, for that one year, the Chicago Chicago Bears were actually pretty freaking good, yeah, I true. might add. They were a joint kick away from actually making some noise in the NFC playoffs. And to this day, everyone will say that the Chicago Bears won the Khalil Mack trade. In his first season with the Damn. Chicago Bears, he was able to put up 12 and a half sacks, which is consistent with his previous year's sack total. But afterwards, there was a little bit of a decline. The year after, there was eight and a half sacks, and in 2020, there was nine sacks. And this past year, he only played seven games, and eventually was sidelined with a foot injury, but he still knocked six sacks. So a lot of people say Khalil Mack isn't nearly as effective as he once was. So I took the it's still nice though. That's kind of not the still nice. only thing I use to determine my decision on how good a player is. Rather, I like using it in conjunction with basic stats and, of course, my own film analysis to form my conclusion about him as a player. And in 2021, he did take a bit of a step back. But in 2020, there's a solid argument that can be made that he was within the top three at the very least of edge rushers in the NFL. Damn. He was a second team all pro in 2020 as well. And that was his last full season playing with the Chicago Bears. Damn. And with everything that's been going on in the AFC West in general and how strong the AFC West has been getting, I can understand why this trade was just made. A few days ago, the Denver Broncos traded for Russell Wilson. They went from a team that was a below average team in my opinion to a team that could easily contend to win the AFC West. Now, note that I said contend because they still have to go up against the Kansas City Chiefs, which have made the AFC Championship every single year that Patrick Mahomes has been under center, which is by no means an easy feat. 
And then you have the Las Vegas Raiders, Raiders who went 10 and 7 this past year, despite having an interim head coach. coach. But it's going to be big, though, for the AFC, though, man, with, Cle with Khalil Mack playing, bro. I'm not going to lie. And David Arnett decided to post videos of himself threatening people with weapons onto social media. And Henry Ruggs decided to get drunk at Top Golf and then getting arrested for driving under the influence. And Damn. Of course, killing someone in the process. And the dog. Were still able to Kill someone in the dog. Everything that's crazy. Going on for them is something that we shouldn't take lightly. So as a result, the Los Angeles Chargers probably felt some pressure. Don't get me wrong, this team Damn. They just signed Mike Williams to a three-year, $60 million contract, which oh my gosh. is a remarkable rate for that young wide receiver, and I expect him to be one of the best wide receivers in the league he at better. some point or another. But now you have to take a look at the defensive side of the ball. I mean, you do not want Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson and Derek Carr to get comfortable in that pocket. So that's why the Los Angeles Chargers decided to melt the internet today. Because according to Adam Schefter and Ian Rapport, the Chicago Bears are trading Khalil Mack to the Los Angeles Chargers in return for a 2022 second round pick and a 2023 sixth round pick, which is causing quite to stir in the NFL community. That's crazy. I wanted to be fair to the Chicago Bears because I really don't see the point of this trade. I'm just going to start. I literally don't this. see that. But if I'm being fair, there's only been two times where a first round pick was given in return for an edge rusher since 1994. The first time was when the Las Vegas Raiders traded Khalil Mack to the Chicago Bears. And the second time was when the Seattle Seahawks traded Frank Clark to the Kansas City Chiefs. So Damn. in regards to that return, I guess you could could rationalize it a little bit considering how Khalil Mack is going on to his age 30 season. And yeah. If you compare that to what Vaughn Miller was acquired for in the middle of the season, and bear in mind Vaughn Miller is two years older than Khalil Mack, then I guess you could make some sense out of it. When you have a player like Khalil Mack on your edge, especially when Aaron Rodgers is returning to the division, you want to get as much help as you can get. It's not like they're getting significant salary cap savings as a result of this. Yes, I guess they're liberated from the other three years of his contract, but this year they're stuck paying $24 million in debt money for his contract. So don't think that Damn. since the Bears were able to trade Khalil Mack, doesn't necessarily mean that they have the ability to go out and get a big name free agent apart from what they already have. They still have $23 million in cap space this year, so I'm assuming Give me like 50, this is a they made that was more in the long term interest of the team. Team. It makes a lot of sense, man. Nice. Typically, I've said this in a lot of my videos. Whenever there's a brand new front office and a brand new regime, which if you take a look at the Chicago Bears, they replaced Ryan Pace with Ryan Poles, and mm. they replaced Matt Nagy with Matt Eberflus, mm. which is by far my favorite name to say in the entire NFL. Like, literally, when he got hired, I just started running around my house saying, Eberflus, Eberflus, Eberflus. But I digress. It makes a lot of sense. A weird that name. They want to start from scratch. So, I think this is the Chicago Bears doing whatever they can to make sure that they have as much cap space as possible for the future. Khalil Mack is a player that you want to acquire if you are contending in the now. And the Los Angeles Chargers are trying to contend in the now. They have one of the most complete teams in the entire NFL. They have a great rushing attack. They have a remarkable quarterback. They have an analytics base. Nick McVay as a head coach that mm. is a defensive mastermind that now actually has some weapons to play with on that defense. I mean, Derwin James, Joey Bosa, and Khalil Mack, you can make That's disgusting. That I'm not going to lie. Joey Bosa easily make the best pass rush and if, the at, and if all those players can stay healthy, it's going to be crazy. For the Los Angeles Chargers to do, especially when you consider the fact that there's additional pressure to go all in now that Justin Herbert is on a rookie scale contract. So they can invest that money in other areas of their team to be as competitive as possible. Once Justin Herbert Herbert is up for a contract extension. I'm personally expecting him to get anywhere within the 40 million, maybe just underneath. But I can imagine by the time he's up for a contract, he can get anywhere in the mid 40 millions. And this is just my own speculation. Yeah. I'm not talking about whether he deserves it or not. I just think this is what's going to happen. Yeah, he's going to get paid good. You want to invest as much as you can in this team. Now that you have this window of opportunity where Justin Herbert is clearly a remarkable quarterback, but you don't yeah. have to pay him that much money. 
because he still on a rookie scale contract. So I give him an A plus for doing it. It's really hard to grade the Chicago Bears because you're not really taking a big swing here. You at least got a second round pick, which I suppose could help moving forward. I, I, I can't give them an F or a D for this move because I understand why they need it. Rather, I'm going to give them a C plus instead. So let me know in the comment section. I personally just think that Chicago Bears shouldn't have did. He should have kept Cleo Mack. Uh, I feel like that was stupid for a sixth round pick and a second round pick. Um, I just feel like it was, it was stupid, bro, for the trade, man. But anyways, man, let me know down below in the comments what you guys think. I'll see you guys in the next video.